Hello, Floss Tube. We're back with another Cheeky Mare Stitches. I'm Libby, also Cheeky Mare. Um, and today we're going to do something a little different. I didn't have a whole lot of time to do some stitching uh, this week, the past two weeks, actually. I've been working mandatory overtime, so 44 hours a week at work, um, drawing wastewater treatment plants, or as like as how we like to call it here on this channel, my poop plants. Um, and then, so 44 hours a week doing that. And then I've also been working 18 to 24 hours a week on the weekends, helping uh, with the early voting. So that's all I'm going to say about that, because this is a cross-stitch channel, not anything else. Or a crafting channel because we're going to talk about some uh, needlepoint as well today. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is I have a couple of viewers that don't know anything about um, cross stitch. And um, some of the jargon is a little confusing. So I wanted to go over some of the... Um, like the two over two, like that kind of stuff, because pe some people don't understand what that means. So I wanted to do a little demonstration. So we're going to do this nifty switch back and forth that my brother figured out. And we're going to, this is not um, cross-stitch fabric. It is plastic uh, needlepoint canvas, but it's got bigger holes and bigger lines. So... I thought it might be easier to see. So when we talk about one over one, one over two, two over two, um, with the cross stitching, we're talking about the first number is how many thread, how many um, strands of thread that we're using. So each um, floss comes in strands okay so when you comes off the roll it comes out in this big like yarn looking thing and then it comes in strands um oop, i'm working the camera so it's not really going to focus but so each one of those strands you're going to pull out to stitch with depending on what size fabric you're using so if we're doing two strands, two over two, we're going to take two strands of this floss. So you pull out, and it, be careful not to get it knotted like I just did. I've done this before. <laughs> um, so you'll pull out two strands of the floss. Okay. And so here's two, and here's the rest of it, so four, because it's a six-stranded floss. So then the second number is the number of fabric threads. So um, if we are going to pretend like this uh, needlepoint canvas is our fabric, then each one of these little lines right here is considered a fabric thread okay so when we go one over one you take one strand of floss that we just did and we're going to go over one fabric thread so that's over this so you're going to go from this corner to this corner to go over that one thread so it's basically the x is going to be a four square and the floss is going to go over one fabric thread. If you're going two over two, you're going to take two strands of floss over two fabric threads. So here's one and here's two. And I don't really know if you can see that. So one, two. Okay, so one, two. So... To, get, to do that in a diagonal, you have to go over three holes. So you're going to go in this one, 
and out that one. And so you're basically doing a three square, a three by three square. So nine squares in the fabric is what you're going over with the X. And where the X crosses is going to be the middle nine. So like if it was a tic-tac-toe board, the middle where everyone wants their first X or O is going to be where the X's cross. So I'm not sure if that helped, but I just wanted to make sure that whenever I say one over one, one over two, two over two, I am saying two strands of floss or one strand of floss, so the working thread, over one or two strands of the fabric threads, if that makes sense. It may or may not, but that is the best that I'm going to do today. So, all right. So like I said, um, I didn't have a whole lot of time this month. So I only have a few whips to show you, but I do have an old finish to show you um, that I haven't fully finished yet. So this is an FO, a finished object, and not an FFO, which is a fully finished object for those of my listeners who are new to cross stitch. So... Let me get that all, and then we're going to go over the shoulder, and here it is. So this is Fury Horse by um, Al Forest Embroidery. It is um, a kit, and it is on 32 count fabric, two over two, so that's two strands of thread over two fabric threads. Two strands of floss over two fabric threads. And that is the coverage that you get. And I finished this back in June, I think. And I actually made an error in the chart, a counting error in the chart, but I think I covered it pretty well. So I... I would um, bet that if I hadn't pointed it out, you wouldn't even have known. But I'm not going to show you where it is, so if you can find it, let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> um, anyway, but kit floss, kit fabric, it was very fun to stitch. Um, and these, the Owl Forest embroidery is in Russia, I believe but um, super easy chart to follow. And I'm going to frame this and put it on my horse wall in my living room. So, um, so the next thing that I'd like to talk about are um, my whips. So I have been fairly monogamous this month because I'm trying to finish something before Christmas. I haven't been completely monogamous, but I have been um, fairly monogamous. So I've only cheated a little bit, if you were talking about marriage analogy. I don't think that works, but okay. <laughs> so um, what I worked on is my stocking for my niece, Madeline. And here it is now. Here's where I am now. And up here is where it'll it'll look like when it's done. And probably down in this area will be where it was um, the last time you saw it. So the last time you saw it, um, I had like this part partially done. And I have since in the last probably two weeks that I've been doing it monogamously, I finished this partial page. And now I'm almost finished with this partial page. So we're actually seeing some of the toe now, yay, um, of Madeline's um, 
stocking. I am going to try and finish this before Christmas 2020. Um, some people said on Instagram, 2020 20 with a little underline underneath the last digit saying maybe next year. And I'm like, no, I'm going to try and finish it this year. Um, it is on 32 count Phoenix. It's a fabric I got on one, two, three stitch with mostly the called for DMCs two over two. So pretty. And I'm to get some motivation and some accomplishment. I'm doing the half pages first. So that may or may not be the best plan. But that's how I'm doing it. So wish me luck. Root me on. Okay. Now, when I wasn't being monogamous with this, um, with this whip, which whip means work in progress for those of you who are new to cross stitching or any crafting. Um, I did have two new, three new starts. Um, there's small ish. So, and one is supposed to be a Christmas present. So this one I'm about to show you is for, is for, um, my mom, hopefully she's not watching. If she is, close your eyes. Um, and it is uh, the bonus chart in Rosewood Manor's curves and corners or corners and curves. Um, here's what it'll look like when it's done. And here it is after I started. I am doing um, the DMC conversion, and it is on a piece of 28 count Jobelin of a light green color. It's actually what I used to do my long dog on. And now when I restarted the long dog, I don't do it on that anymore. So my mom's favorite-ish color is this um, light shades of kind of an olivey green. So I think it works pretty well. Very pretty. Um, my second new start of the month, shame on me, but I'm going to do a whips mostly next year. I'm going to. I may have four new starts next year and that's it. So I'm going to be working on my whips. So that's the plan anyway. All right. So my next new start is um, the new normal by Long Dog Sampler. And here is where I started. I started in the middle. Um, it is on a 40 count chalkboard. I believe by XJU um, Designs. And there's where I am in this corner. Uh, this is what it'll look like. And I am also using an XJU variegated that I love and I have a whole bunch of. So I think the new normal is going to be perfect on this kind of um, dusty chalkboard. I wouldn't call it clean chalkboard, but dusty chalkboard gray color. And I just love how it kind of almost sparkles. There we go. So pretty. And it is, I believe it's a flower motif. I just need to fill in the rest of it. Okay. So the last start that I did today or this month was um, a stitch along or a sal stitch along. And it is with um, Caroline from 
Off the Grid Needle Arts. She's doing a, I'll put the hashtag down below. I think it's, I'll put the hashtag down below. I don't remember it. But this is what I chose to do. And it is Blooming Bouquets by Jeanette Douglas. And I chose the first, the first pattern. There's four, I believe, or there might be five now. And it's thankful is what it's called. And I'm doing it on a 36 count blue smoke Edinburgh linen that I got from one, two, three stitch. And here is where I am now. So I didn't get very far. I'm doing the DMC um, conversion. So I have four colors in here. It may look only like two, but I've got four colors. And I started this and then realized I was way behind on Madeline's stocking. <laughs> so <laughs> I needed um, I needed to put it down. And I'll get back to it when I get Madeline's stocking done. But I love this uh, smoke blue is what it's called. Um, it's kind of, it, it looks like. It's kind of a greeny color more than a blue color, but I wouldn't necessarily call it aqua because this is aqua, but it's like a dusty aqua. It's really pretty. Maybe I'll give this to my mom for Christmas. I'm not sure yet. Um, but I love the colors in the pattern. So... And this one is the most colorful, I believe. The, the other patterns are like reds and greens and um, they're, they're all very pretty, but this one was the most colorful and it had the best color in the world, purple in it. Um, so that is why I chose it. Okay, um, I also have an uh, FFO in my a previous finish, FFO. Um, in the background, it's another one of my quilts, um, and hopefully Daniel and I will shoot some B-roll over here. Um, and it is a Tula Pink. I've used some limited edition Tula Pink, um, or discontinued Tula Pink, uh, and that is a fabric designer. Fabrics. And I bought just this, these tiny little pieces of fabric on eBay. And um, I found a pattern that I really liked, but my fabric pieces wouldn't fit in that particular pattern. So what I did was um, I scaled it down using some of my CAD software, um, CAD computer aided design. That's how I draw um, stuff for my job. Let me put this on full cam so now you can see it a little better. Um, and it is also, the quilt has also been quilted by um, Stephanie at Lucky Star Quilt Co. in Carmel, Indiana. Um, she does wonderful work. Um, this is a digital pentagraph. She didn't freehand it. Um, but it's beautiful and I love it. And, um, I'm actually really proud of the back too. I maybe will do some C roll of the, uh, of the back too. Cause I used all, I didn't want to, I had spent so much money on these little tiny pieces uh, and it's not so much money, but I spent a good bit of money on um, this limited edition or out of print fabric that I wanted to use all of it. So I did a pieced back as well. So it kind of makes it a double sided quilt. So one more traditional ish, um, pattern and then a modern pattern. So a more modern quilt pattern that you can flip back and forth. It is only a lap size quilt so it doesn't it can't actually go on a bed really but 
it's very pretty and I'm very proud of it. So, all right. Um, the next thing that we're going to do today, something a little different is I started out as a needle pointer and, um, I started as a needle pointer and I wanted to show some of my previous finishes for needlepoint and kind of explain the differences between cross stitch and needlepoint. So let me change to here. So here is one of my very first um, needlepoint projects and it is a counted canvas piece. So what I did was I took the fabric that I wanted to finish it with. So this kind of polka dot fabric and I picked colors from it. And then I just stitched this kind of quilt pattern design in to f in four different colors. And then someone else finished it because I wasn't quite that good at sewing yet. But the neat thing about counted canvas and needlepoint is um, the floss can make very interesting designs and um, textures. So you know how in cross stitch they want you to do the bottom leg and the top leg the same way every time. So if you start in the bottom left and go to the top right, you want to do that with the first leg, you want to do that every time. And the reason for that is the floss will catch the light differently. And so it will give it a kind of an odd texture instead of just seeing um, the picture of the pixels. Um, so, but in this counted um, canvas, I did different directions of floss on purpose to kind of give it this checkerboard look and make it kind of look like I used different colors of green, a darker and a lighter, but this is all one color purple. This is all one color aqua, but it looks like two different colors because in this, in the darker ones in this particular square, all of the stitches are going um, from the top or the bottom right to the top left and all the lighter ones are going from the bottom left to the top right. And so it gives this really interesting um, effect. So that's, I think that's part of the reason why that you wanna do your bottom leg and top leg and cross stitch the same way every time because you don't want, you know, this the distraction of different texture in your, in your um, pixels. Um, if it was a digital camera, but in this particular piece, um, it makes a really neat effect. And you also don't just do um, diagonal stitches. Like in here, I did some horizontal stitches so you can see some of the um, fabric threads behind there and it gives it kind of a speckled look, which is really interesting. Um, I really enjoyed this piece. It was one of my first pieces. Um, so, and here's a cross stitch that I previously did. It is Hogwarts, um, Hogwarts in watercolor. And I will link the pattern down below. I don't remember offhand who, <coughs> excuse me, who did this piece. Um, but this is in my Ravenclaw bathroom. And um, before you guys critique the drywall, this is an old, old house. It is plaster and lath. Um, so I love the imperfections in the wall because it means that it's old, but still in really, really good shape. So this piece I framed myself, um, with, um, a custom scrap piece frame that I bought at my um, needlework framer. This is another um, needlepoint piece, but this is different. It is a 
um, painted canvas. So anywhere you see the flower um, was painted by an artist. And then I went in with thread and filled it in. So instead of a chart that I had to read to get where all these color placements are, I just picked thread that were the similar color to all of the colors in the um, painting that was actually on the painted canvas. Um, right, so anywhere that the flower is, I basically did um, a half stitch if it were a cross stitch. So in, in um, needlepoint, it's called basket weave or continental, depending on if you go up or down or side to side or on a diagonal with each stitch. Um, so I, it's, it's quite a bit quicker, honestly, than cross stitch. And it also, it also is on bigger, uh, canvas. So, um, it's easier for, uh, beginners or older people to see and understand. So, and then I liked what the canvas looked like. You can't really see the mo modeling on the canvas. Kind of down here, you can see the modeling um, on the canvas that it was painted on. So I didn't want to fill in the entire canvas. So my um, needlepoint instructor suggested I do a pattern that wasn't too cover that didn't cover too heavily but also gave the background some visual visual interest. So I, the, the artist did the um, flowers and then I made the pattern, the geometric pattern behind using two strand, three strands, three colors of floss. So a dark, a light, and then a super light for these squares. But I also did the squares in alternating directions to give it so that one catches the light a little differently. Um, so it gives it some visual interest as well. And I really love this piece. I haven't actually gotten it framed, but it is mounted and it is sitting on my mantle waiting to be framed. This is the second project I ever did. Um, I loved this fabric and I love horses. And this actually was a black and white piece that I decided, and it was a painted canvas. So if, if it's painted and the design's already on there, it is really easy to adapt and just pick whatever color you want. Now, some people are like, oh, you gotta follow the, what the canvas says. No, no, you don't. You can do whatever you want. This is gonna hang in your house. So, Pick whatever colors you want, change whatever you want. I mean, like this ribbon effect, which is with long diagonal stitches, um, was not in the painting. These were all supposed to be a single color um, continental stitch. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. And then I wanted to do some that fill in the background with some interesting stuff and kind of make the horses kind of pop off the page. So I like squares and I, and this checkerboard pattern is really easy to do. And then I um, did one of this, you might recognize this border from the first pillow that I did. So this was the first, um, printed fab, uh, printed or painted canvas that I ever did. It was not the second project I ever did. I'm mistaken from that. All right, this one is a little later in my career. Um, it was a Christmas present from my Aunt Susie slash my brother Dan. And if you look really closely, the paint on this painted canvas was in oranges and reds. And I'm not a big fan of the warmer colors. Um, I like some yellows. I like some pinky oranges, but I'm, I'm really not a big fan of reds and oranges um, to each your own. But 
Um, so I decided I was going to do it in the cool tones like I like it. So, um, and also to challenge myself, I did a continuous um, decorative stitch pattern. And the hard part about that is there are color changes. And sometimes the color changes don't fit inside of the, like in a really nice place in the decorative stitch. So what you have to do is something what needle pointers call uh, compensating. And some people really hate compensating. It like, I don't know what it is. They can't think about it the way I do. And because I'm a visual person, because I'm a mathematical pattern person, I saw this and was like, I could definitely do this entire thing in one decorative stitch minus the um, yellow kind of, I call this the blown up plick paisley. It looks like you like went zoomed really far into a paisley or like this, if you ever have seen those mathematical equations that have been graphed, um, it's kind of like that. So I did a lot of things my own way in this particular piece. And those, like, once you get good at something, you can change things. If you don't like exactly what's going on in the pattern, but you kind of like the pattern, just change something. It's, um, if, just be confident with it. And the worst thing that happens is you might have to frog a little bit. This is one that is all continental or all half stitch if it were a cross stitch piece. Um, and it's similar to a hade. Um, and I did add a little sparkly thread and there are no real called for colors. You just look at the picture that's painted and you pick the colors that you like. So this tree may have not been pinks. I'm pretty sure it was, but it may not have been pinks. It could have been oranges. And I'm like, well, I don't like orange, so I'm going to do it in pink. That's perfectly fine. Um, the only part I don't really like about this piece is the rock area. I didn't do that very well, but standing back from it, you don't really notice it. Um, this is another counted canvas piece. Um, it's another quilt pattern <laughs> uh, adaptation. Um, and again, I found a fabric I liked and then found threads that matched the fabric that I liked. Um, and these are really fun to stitch. They go really quickly because instead like this right here, this line is maybe three or four or five stitches if it were cross stitch. So going full, I mean, these real long lines, they're, they're, it's a little bit dangerous sometimes because they can get snagged if you're not careful, but as long as you take care of your pieces, <laughs> these long, beautiful lines um, will be will be fine in um, needlepoint. Here's another one, and this is bad light, sorry, but here's another one where I took a um, fabric that I wanted to finish it as, did the piece, added a, a nice border, and. Um, I really like this piece. It's another pillow that I did. And that is it. That is all of my um, needlepoint completions. I have several whips in needlepoint, but um, I haven't picked them up since my Aunt Susie died. Um, it reminds me too much of her, so it's a little painful. And I'm really, really enjoying cross stitch right now. So. Eventually, I'll probably pick up Needlepoint again because I still really do like some of my whips in Needlepoint. But um, I'm also really liking how dainty and sleek cross stitch looks. Um, Needlepoint uses a different kind of silk or a different kind of cotton. And it's beautiful still, but it's more yarn-like than, um, than floss-like. And at this point in my tastes, I find that cross-stitch is um, more suitable to my tastes. But 
I like it all, and eventually I should finish most of my whips. Um, but that's all I have for you today. Um, it's only been 36-ish minutes, but and it might be shorter when Daniel ed edits it out. But I wanted to thank all of you who have subscribed. As of today, I have 196 subscribers. And I mentioned last video that if I got 250, um, when I got 250, I would do a giveaway. And I have decided on what I'm going to give away. So this is going to be motivation for you to share my videos to other stitchers and get them to subscribe. Um, I am going to do a drawing of my of commenters on the video where I have 250 subscribers. So it's not this one yet. It'll probably hopefully be next one. Um, but what I'm going to do is whoever the winner is of that, I'm going to ask them for their email for their wish list on one, two, three stitch. And I'm going to pick one or two things on their wish list, depending on how much they cost. And I'm just going to surprise them with whatever they have on their wish list, like one or two things off their wish list. So subscribe, <laughs> like, share, comment. And the sooner I get to 250 subscribers, the sooner you have a chance of getting something off of your wish list from me. So I hope you're having a lovely November. Um, I know it's a hectic time and I hope that everything goes well as well as can be and I hope everyone enjoys their stitching. Thanks for joining me. Bye.